What's up? I'm Grizz. Welcome to Hyoka episode 3. Some fun stuff with a, a enjoyable mystery last week, but more so really fun character interactions, introducing us a new girl to the fold, and then as well as our best wingman over here, kind of helping us and pushing us in a direction that's that's going to be good for our main two to kind of communicate a bit more and get on get along a little bit better and be able to hang out a bit more which was really really good now we're left in a spot Shatanda has some things that she wants to discuss which I'm assuming is going to be something regarding her reasons for joining the club initially and maybe the reasons why that she did and what she's trying to do we'll end up going from there uh, if you like it all hit the like and subscribe they do mean a lot to me feel free to stick around for the discussion leave any comments about this episode or series could go on though episode three was the clock thing stopping there with the heart shape supposed to be like his heart stopped for a second <laughs> by looking at her and her reaction. Oh, I was going to say the color seemed a bit off. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Her own personal matter. She said that when she joined the club too, right? That was her reason. She's probably going to him too because he can solve things a bit better than everyone that she's been encountered with ever. <laughs> the past few times have been good. And then the clock changes back to a circle though. Alright. Your uncle. <laughs> How's he going to do that? Oh. Uh, this might be a bit out of our pay grade. Ah, so there's our attachment for being in the club, at least. Gotcha. I really like the, the visual that they're using for this. The flip, like, picture book. Oh. So he did answer, so you just do not remember. Hmm. What the fuck would he have said? <laughs> he was like, this is the natural reaction to what I just told you. What was he trying to hide in a way? Hmm. It's interesting too because I feel like if it was something so like out there and like traumatic for her, like such a bad like moment like that, that she would act up, that she would remember it a bit more vivid than usual. Maybe I'm not understanding that. Was to join the same club in which he was uh and maybe find Yeah, yeah. As he's shown recently, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was logical conclusions, though. But he, I get. Ah. Okay, yeah, I get. It. I was gonna say why he trying to conserve energy so much. You clearly want to be with her. <laughs> But it makes sense that he'd be so like reluctant to do this if it's something that could really change the entire outlooks on somebody's life. It's something that she's been looking towards for years now. Does she have many? We haven't seen any. Hmm, closed book. You're special to her, brother man. There's no way he can deny that now. <laughs> He's like, alright, I'll help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, that's what I was thinking too. Or he passes away. Yeah. Yeah, before that comes, yeah, and for that moment, I guess. 
どうせやりたいことなんかないでしょうん何を取れないガールだからお前の頼みを引き受けるとは言わない I'll help you find your answer, but I will not help you think. ヒントになるようなことを見かけたら必ず報告しよう。Okay. その解釈に手間取るようならその時。So he'll lead her in a direction, but won't really give her things. At least that's what it seems like. Is the sister home? No, they drove away. Male? Yeah, okay. 全略私は今イスタンブールにいます。I messed up, so、uh, yeah. Is that like a make sure you're having fun with the shit that you're doing because you won't regret it in the future? So, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, how do you know? Huh? Oh, I mean, I guess it was tradition, yeah. <laughs> you're going to offer some help? Cool. Oh, yeah. So they're in the club. They're locked in there? So we need to find like a code or some shit to get in? How are we gonna. Oh my god. Why is she here? Oh. So somebody took it out? I'm not, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys have gotten close. So, no, take a mini wa, bush no yakin king cot the kite out of Dakada. Anaki a coco so yo shano and in a mida corona. So, no, I don't need bushs a kawatana. So, it's probably taken and put elsewhere. Harik Tiruane. Absolutely. Whatever I bunny Harik. This is what he looks like when he's pumped. <laughs> now he missing. We need him though. He's good at giving our guy a push here. Oh. What even is that? Like a sensor? Oh, there it is. Yeah, Sumanae. Kangio Kaketa. Wanga Kabishin Bumbuni. New Bukibokana? No, sir. Ano, Kokova Kabishin Bumbuna Bustinandeska? So, Dakado. We can't let you in. Closes the door behind them. Hmm. Bushu Zaiko? Hmm. <laughs> the lucky game. What is he cooking up in there? Remembering people's name once again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's trying to hide some of them. Yeah, they're not here. <laughs> No. What are you lying? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> he does, that's why he's leaving. <laughs> he's like, shit, I'm not doing all that. Now I gotta do something. Alright, I thought he had a full reason for wanting to leave besides that. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get a teacher involved then. <laughs> what? When did she join? Cool. I mean, if so, I don't think it would be hidden somewhere. Huh. Come on, Kakate Miruka. Sumimase. And as a result, he's trying to hide and keep them for himself. It's not our club room, but it has to do with our club. I mean, it's in a panic. Yeah, if they just happen to show up, yeah, drop them off for us. 
見つかったらそうしておくよ、うん、お願いしますねえオレキどうしてこんなところで待ってるのよ省エネだ何よそれ I mean he's gonna bring them there anyway so we'll just wait here <laughs> 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 what the Just didn't want to run into him while it was happening. Which is about a half, though. <laughs> yeah, as long as you make that clear. Mm -hmm. By closing it, not wanting you in. <laughs> mm -hmm. まどを開けて扇風機を回していたが、なぜ内側から鍵をかけ、赤外線センサーまで設置して。ちょっと待って。They <laughs> カバコナ。教育会のメーカーの温蔵室もなれば、何としてでも不法行為を見つかるわけにはいかないってことだな。ああ。まあ、もし知ったんだが風邪をひいていなかったら、一発で匂いに気づいてただろうがな。They did make that a point earlier when she sneezed. I noticed the 結局文集ってどこにあったの?In the locker. Yes. <laughs> They're there the whole time. Oh, oh. And he didn't want to get caught by doing all of that stuff. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. They they were constantly showing different things, I mean, as you just pointed out, but specifically relating to the, the fan and all that stuff, uh, in the way that he was acting and being a bit more sus. I just assumed it was more if he was trying to use and keep them for himself in whatever sort of way. Which would track for the entirety of everything else if you take out the things regarding smell and the fan, everything else that he was doing there. Not then, later, not wanting to get caught by the advisor and whoever else that was going to come search. So this makes a lot more sense, and I I didn't piece that together, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My guy. Satoshi, the back number is found. We have one from the year that your uncle was here. She looks spooked. This is the one. Oh. That's the show name. <laughs> oh. So what was it that made you go fucking crazy? Mm, something so crazy that just broke him. The culture festival is coming up for us too, right? What the hell? So he did some shit that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's what I wanted, though. They're like praising him in a sort of way, but what exactly was it that he did that needed, like, or resulted in that? Of course. Yeah, of course. Why, why would it be there? I think this episode was actually really good, but I think I enjoyed it and it's selling me more on what the show itself is for different reasons than the previous ones did. While I felt the previous ones were very character focused in a way, and I talked about this at length, I think, during both of them, how they feel very mystery background, allows characters to interact and have this sort of connection and allows them to kind of develop themselves and us to learn a lot more about them. This episode felt more develop storylines and, you know, drop a lot of things here and there about what could be going on in the future and what we're focused on present and not as much about connections between characters that are being made. Literally at the end, taking the example of not having the anthology that we end up needing 
the the literal first one, the one that we actually want, and it extends it into another episode of then you being like, oh, now we have to go and find this. Or even during the situation where Buddy was hiding all the books, right? Same exact thing can occur where we use that as a way to segue us into actually getting the books at some point, which segues us into getting us to the next mystery of the next episode. And they all kind of connect in some sort of path or they leave something to be, I guess desired would be the right word, but in a good way of wanting you to come back and wanting you to experience more, which I really like uh, a lot actually and i think really does a excellent job here and they do a really good job of not changing scenery up a lot of keeping us in kind of still static places like while well, you still trying to kind of change it you have similar things where the whole first 10 or so minutes was literally us in the coffee shop having a conversation but then the other half was us just in the room confronting this other guy and then the other half was us going through anthologies and stuff right it's literal just simple one room like kind of things maybe you move around a little bit here and there one location the entire time focused on one exact thing but being able to introduce different things such as the thing that we saw with the picture book uh when chitanda was telling us her story uh, or giving us examples of like the things that were happening before with her uncle and everything or just introduce things like that can kind of come up and kind of make you feel like you're in a different area or even at the beginning when we go into this kind of i guess like like rosy would be the word because he continuously uses a uh state that ariki was in and exactly like him kind of being on the edge of his seat of like wanting to know exactly where chitanda was going with the story of everything all the colors being like the way that they were right and all the other things within it all the circles and all the other things in the the, the cafe itself taking different shapes and showing the hearts and stuff and just being able to shift these scenes and elevate them into different things and different headspaces of the characters or give you different visual representations of things while keeping you kind of static on the thing you're doing. It does a good enough job of allowing you to explore the story for what it's really trying to to express or express the things regarding the mystery aspects of this and be able to bring some life to it without having kind of just boring like like one on one shots with characters and just reversing them constantly, you know? Or just showing you like a random coffee cup and then holding still shots on that for a long time. Like instead of making it boring direction, which could be a very likely thing. And I've seen plenty of shows that do similar things. Being able to have these visual representations that show you and express the show a lot more elevates it and gives it more life, which is really lovely. Fun moment that, that kind of stood out to me at the beginning of the episode was specifically when the heart within the clock is kind of ticking back and forth while Ariki's kind of in this this specific state uh mind mind state i guess that he's in here and all of a sudden before it all kind of comes to life him kind of on the edge of his seat wanting to know what chitan is going to tell him or what exactly it is while he's under the impression it could possibly be like a confession or something right and him wanting to know what's going to come next right before she drops it on him the heart stops and gets stuck in place and then he snaps out of it as she kind of expresses what it is right which was really really cool detail but she goes on throughout that that moment there to kind of express uh what she is that she needs out of him so talking about how that he's the only one that she really can turn to at this point maybe because he's similar to her uncle in which we're trying to learn more about or the things that he said are the actions that he chose at one point in her life but and he has some sort of similarities due to his ability to kind of have answers for everything or figure things out um also because he's shown a history to her and he's been supportive and he's been that person that she can kind of rely on in a way to solve these things and keep things interested and you know, peak her curiosity in some sort of way, like her uncle was in the past. It allows her to feel like she has somebody else that she can rely on and open herself up to a little bit that might be able to help her in the certain situation that she's kept deep within her. Finding out he's kind of been missing over time and having this this big incident that I guess happened when she brought him an anthology and specifically asked him about the club itself and exactly what was, you know, the the thing regarding that. Or I think she said that she brought him an anthology. It might have not been. It might have just been him telling a story and then she didn't want to, she wanted some some additional info that he wasn't willing to give, but him being kind of hesitant to and not wanting to and then ultimately doing it, which causes this big like emotional reaction out of her. Uh, and also for her to see this guy who's kind of always been there and helpful and telling her things and just being there for her when she was younger kind of didn't do anything to comfort her in any sort of way while he saw her in this, this state that she found herself in was something that really bothered her or really stuck on her mind of why exactly was he acting out the way that he was why did he do this why is he not like what what was his reasons for almost doing this but i found that scene rather interesting too because she's somebody who has a very good memory of a lot of things uh, i would assume she has like some sort of like eidetic memory or something similar uh, as she seems to recall a lot of things we literally see later on she knows the 
guy who we go to for the uh, the newspaper club or whatever he's in, when we're going to look for the anthologies, wind up finding uh, like or noticing that she knows his name, even though that he's never met her or doesn't really know anything about her, right? Just off of like probably one interaction that she had or one time hearing it. So you would assume that she has the sort of eidetic memory or just something really about her that can really dick a lot of shit in her brain. <laughs> I don't really know. Usually like in situations you get, um, especially if they're very impactful or emotional or they're very something like that, right? Even if they're, they're traumatizing in some sort of way, a lot of times those are vivid imagery that you get in your mind. Like they constantly can stay in your mind or they're very easy to recall. Those are the things that really stand out the most. And the fact that this is a one situation that she cannot remember the words that he spoke to her while she can remember everything else that happened in the moment of him not getting up, him not doing anything, the mom being around the way that she reacted to the whole situation, right? Like why, why can she not specifically point out these words? Is it some mental block that she's trying to forcefully stop herself from remembering? Or at the time, was it something that she didn't want to hear? She thought could be bad. like i don't know her reason for that but it is interesting because those are usually situations you do remember more so why she's not remembering something i i'd be rather interested to kind of understand and say we moved into something regarding like midterms and everything with people taking it we had some fun like transitions and cuts that they were kind of doing uh in that middle section to kind of extend you to the end of life here but also to show you why we were kind of prolonging the process of what we were doing simply because midterms and everything were going on and we couldn't get access to the club room or really do anything later on Areki gets a a notice again or a mail from his sister who kind of tells him some things and talks about how she's taken the wrong turn kind of where she's at uh in her trip that she's on on. But at the end of the day, she thinks this is something she can look back on and really enjoy. And this is going to be a good life experience at the end of the day. And she's going to look back in years and be like, I don't regret being here. I don't regret that I experienced and tried new things. Right. And I think that's a, a more of a message towards him to be like, don't regret the things that you're going to do. Don't take this lazy, this, this energy conserving approach that you constantly want to and expand yourself a lot more and just kind of take shots at things that could be more interesting for you and that you're not going to regret at some time in the future, which is great. The sister seems to be just constantly dropping things for him and putting him in positions for him to succeed, which is lovely. So I do wonder if we're actually going to ever meet her at some point. That'd be really cool, but not necessary, especially at this current point in the story. Uh, maybe later down the line at some other time her though being a former member of the club as well specifically drops the info to us that that if we want to find these anthologies they should be in this sort of thing uh this the safe that they have or whatever this this thing that they got us finding out though that they're not actually where she said that they were but that's because club rooms move every so often and things can change and people shift things around so now we have to kind of track this down to the base and figure out exactly what we're looking for which all leads us to the i guess the main mystery that we kind of set up throughout this episode and solved regarding the guy in the club room that we end up showing up at. Uh, immediately as we walk by, you notice two sensors on the wall wondering what exactly that is. And it's usually to hide something like, oh shit, somebody's kind of coming. I should have picked up on this one a lot sooner. I, I do blame myself completely for that. This is one like it was, this one was fairly obvious in a way. Um, it, it could just be a lot of times I feel like with shows and anime and stuff, they kind of go a bit more simplistic routes. Uh, with a lot of things that they do so especially being at school like i just felt like something regarding like oh somebody's hiding cigarettes and stuff like wouldn't even be an approach that they would take and it would just be something like beyond simple because a lot of these last ones have been like things very simple like oh this is very self-explanatory kind of thing like what's going on so i was like, kind of expecting like a, oh he felt that these anthologies would be good for him to kind of report history or do these sort of things and he wants to hold on to them and not let anybody else have them and it would make a lot of sense for him to use for these these stories or whatever else that he has to write uh and he's trying to kind of hide it for that reason so he's been very cautious because he knows eventually somebody's going to come for them but it made a lot more sense the as we kind of explored it a bit more uh especially specifically because he was so fidgeting like when you first meet him uh the fact that he closes the door behind him doesn't want people to see inside the room probably specifically so that they can't smell inside the room if he leaves the door open and then being able to go in the room and see that he has a fan blowing and he has this whole bunch of boxes kind of like in the center area instead of having like a proper table or anything with a big like cloth over it like having all these signs with a window open so that the air can get out right like trying to hide the fact of the things that he was doing and it just it makes plenty of sense uh i blame myself <laughs> I can that one a bit sooner, or at least catching on. But yeah, that one made made plenty of sense ultimately at the end of the day with Ricky kind of being like, oh, let me take this, I guess, in a better approach without him like calling out the guy or trying to put him on the spot in any sort of way. Well, he did put him on the spot, just kind of threatening him like in a way of being like, oh, or not threatening is probably not the word. I guess intimidating. I think he even used simply being like, I'll get an advisor to come look if you want to. And him realizing, oh shit, if somebody does this, I'm going to get caught. I'll get in trouble. I can't have that happen. And then 
Oreki kind of setting it up in a way that allows him to be like, let me not get this guy in any trouble in any sort of way. If you magically find them some way, because you know where they are, I know you that you know where they are. You know that I know you, <laughs> like all that. We'll make this work and I'll go kind of stay out of the way so that I won't see you or I won't see any of that stuff happening. None of these people will catch on in any sort of way. And then we can go and finally get our anthologies and do everything that we can. So that all got wrapped up nicely. And he kind of took a very nice approach that I really liked uh, kind of how he went about it. Which I guess makes sense. It's a bit more energy conserving. It doesn't allow him to kind of have to raise his voice and lash out at somebody or go get help from other people or like do anything, you know. So it made it made plenty of sense the way that he kind of went about that. And then finally ending it off, uh, talking about the anthologies that we were able to find and kind of going through them, looking through the second one in specific, which talks upon, I guess, like in praise of Chitanda's uncle and the things that he did for whether it was the club or the school or just whatever and his legacy that he kind of left behind and what exactly it was we don't know is they don't really give us any specifics and you would assume that you could trace that all back to the first one except the first one is missing now which perfectly segues us into exactly where we're going to head in our second part of this episode or the next episode i guess uh and the next half of this arc so allowing us to kind of speculate on exactly what that is i'm not even gonna begin to speculate i'm just gonna kind of let it play out and see what happens i really don't know what it was but he did some good stuff it seems and people kind of liked and messed with that heavy uh the only thing that i really did notice is one of the shots immediately when they started talking about the book being missing i think or were they talking something like that uh they showed that house again or that extra building that we were seeing outside the school that we specifically touched on in the first episode which makes you think that if you go down there we might be able to find this other anthology that we're looking for and if not maybe we'll be able to find some more clues down there and they keep kind of setting this up or showing this in certain things so it's just something i'm going to keep on the back of my mind it could literally just be they were trying to show different shots so you're not bored the entire time and they're just giving you some like scenery to give you a better feel for how the school is but i, I think it, it was placed in a specific specific way like there uh so that made plenty of sense but it seems like we're going to continue this mystery a bit further and we're going to kind of try and figure it out a bit more and i'm excited to see kind of the route that that goes and i'm not really going to speculate too hard on exactly what's going on but overall like this a lot i liked how we didn't have to character explore as much anymore but we could kind of focus a lot story-wise and developing that kind of plot and making this work really well in the same way despite the first two episodes not being like that so excellently done that's gonna be all from me though uh if you got anything you want to say though leave it in the comments would really appreciate that if you liked it all hit the like and subscribe they do really mean a lot to me feel free to check out the other videos on the channel leave any comments about this episode or series i will be back for episode four soon though you guys have a good one see ya